How are we doing? Welcome back to Rusty Jeep. Uh, today we're going to be talking about flow cooler water pump and why I decided to put this in. Um, it's getting colder, so we are inside the garage, locked in here. Still a little bit nippy out there, um, so excuse the echo if there's an echo. Um, now this is also going with the whole theme of made in America. This housing itself is imported. I called them up and I asked, you know, what was made in America? All the guts, all this stuff, the pillar, the guts, this is made in America, the housing is not. So this still is as close as I can get to made in America for a water pump. Now, why did I decide to go with flow uh, cooler? Uh, you're gonna see a lot of sh um, shit on the forums if you um, still look at them about how you don't need a high flow or high pressure water uh, pump. And I'm gonna just uh, politely disagree because I don't think um, they could take in consideration a bunch of things. A um, couple reasons that I went with this. First, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history of me with a Jeep. History, past events, that I had something very similar to this on there. I actually don't wanna say I had this company on there, but I think it was. I used to go to Death Valley all the time and I had a problem with heating up, so I had to run that Jeep super cool. And the thermostat and a high uh, flow of water pump made a huge difference of running that Jeep cool enough where I always spent many, many weekends in Death Valley and never overheated. And that's a, that's a testament to if you build your Jeep right for what you're gonna do with it, this thing can last you forever. Now, why am I putting a, a high flow water pump in at this time? A couple of reasons. It's an older motor, and I still believe that the more circulation you get, it, the better. Now, a couple of things about this is at low RPM, so if you're doing a lot of four wheel drive, if you're towing stuff, if um, you're rock crawling, um, in general, if you're putting a load on the motor at lower RPMs, this is gonna push as much water, as much coolant through your system as if you're on highway speeds. And how many times have you heard Jeepers or even hot rodders say, you know, on the highway, the car runs fine, but then it starts heating up. That's because at lower RPMs, your um, water pump's not pushing through um, the coolant. So this, with the propeller design and um, the pretty tight on the variants, this is pushing as much coolant through your system at idle, all the way up to, I think it's, I want to say 3000 RPMs or 3200 RPMs around there. But once you get to a certain amount, it's not going to keep on pushing, um, like it's not going to blow your system up. It does at idle do about, I think they say double the stock pump and about 20% more than a high, an other high flow um, water pump. So that's significant. Also because they take more time and use better materials for their guts. You're also putting less stress and wear on your motor. The reason being is not taking as much force to put this, um, spin this blade. And because of that, you're saving on horsepower. You're not actually saving on horsepower. You're not using that horsepower that you normally would use. And that's why a lot of race car guys will be going to electric fan. They don't run a clutch fan. They don't run pulley systems because anything you put on your pulley is going to basically take away from horsepower. Um, and I'm more worried about the, the torque than the horsepower, but I don't want to rob power when I don't have to. Other things um, about this is, I got maybe some plans later on in the future, but we're not gonna talk about them. But this is gonna, because it's high flow and it creates a higher pressure, you're less likely to get um, water, um, Spot, like heat spots on your cylinder or pre-ignition because of steam pockets. And what pre-ignition is, is say you're running a hot motor um, and you get a ping. Right, keep on going. Say you get a ping or something or you call pre-ignition. Um, what the reason being is you got your cylinder got hot and it's not firing in the sequence that it can't, um, um, it's gonna do damage to your piston or your valves. A lot of people have those problems when they run nitrous um, or even a turbo because that nitrous pre-ignites and what it does is blow, um, your piston's going up and it's gonna shove it down faster or it's gonna blow your valve. So this in theory would help with um, pre-ignition problems. Um, and that's one of the reasons I wanted this because I am gonna be putting some stress on this to test some stuff out and I, want, um, I don't wanna have any issues with the steam pockets or hot spots. Uh, Price-wise, 
I'm not gonna lie to you, you can get a cheap China normal water pump price, 30 bucks, 34 bucks. You can get a, a decent, a little bit better one for you know high flow, probably about 70 bucks. Um, but because it's made in America, because I did some research and I believe in the product, this one's around $100, $109. So you need to make the decision if it's worth it for you. For me, it is. Um, I'm gonna install it real quick, uh, show you how I do it. And this is brought to you by Flowcore, colder than my ex-wife. And this is brought to you by Flowcore, colder than my reaction to men cheerleaders and NFL games. I'm kidding, they're not sponsoring me. No one sponsors me. So before we even start to install the water pump, what we need to do is put the inlet pipe to your water pump on. The inlet pipe is gonna line up right about here. That's what returns from the heater core from your Jeep. So I see a lot of people putting um, RTV in there and all a bunch, that's up to you. When I did call them, they said, oh geez, I'm not gonna pull them they said to use the plumber tape. So that is what I'm gonna use. This is where we're gonna thread it in. On, the, on this particular model, the thread starts right about here. So you could try to thread in there, it's not gonna happen. So just make sure you're straight. And you start threading it in. Okay, see how this is where I get scared. Right there. We're gonna get our wrench. Say a prayer, because it's gonna crack, it's gonna crack on me. Okay, we're gonna line this up real quick just to see where it is. So we know we need to go a little bit more. I want this thing right over here. I'll show you. And that looks pretty good. Now that we've got the tube on, the next step is to put the gasket on. Um, it's got a cheap paper gasket. And yes, I'm still using RTV with the gasket. Um, you don't have to, I do. This is a machine surface. This is an old um, surface. I've cleaned it as well as I can. Um, still not perfect in my opinion. So I will use a little RTV. Um, and when I say a little RTV, I mean a little RTV people. So I happen to be using for a water pump and a thermostat, I'll be using the blue. I'm not gonna be using the black on this one. So I do wish they had a little tubes to make a better line, but they don't. So all I'm gonna do is start putting this on here and there, put the gasket on and made it together. Okay, now I have this um, side on with some RTV and I have this side with some RTV. Now I'm gonna place this on and put the bolts in. Have you seen how expensive gloves are lately? You're gonna have, on your water pump, you're gonna have one longer bolt than the rest of the bolts. That's going to be the, to the top one. You're going to have one bolt that goes through your, on this Jeep, particular Jeep. Um, you have one bolt, which is this bolt right there. That is the only bolt that is going to go into your block without being enclosed. So that hole is open into your water jacket. So what we're going to do on that hole, we'll take some um, adhesive that I have and I'll show you in a second. But let's get this in there and start putting this on. Okay. So we're gonna carefully try to line everything. Okay. We're gonna 
carefully try to get, there's a little lip there, so we're carefully trying to get that lip in there without touching anything. Now you can use um, tape or you can use this Permafix stuff that I'm about to use on all the bolts. Um, some people I've even seen see use anti-seize. You don't have to. And quite honestly, I used to never put any of this stuff on there. Oh. Strength test. And I'm still thinking not to use this, but I'm going to use it. And I'm not using it on all the threads. It just sets up pretty quick. I'm going to wipe most of that off. Now that we've snugged all this down, it's time to torque it down. And we're gonna to torque it down to, well, the specs call for 270 inches, which comes out to be 22 and a half pounds. I'm going to torque it down right now. And my torque wrench set for 21 and a half pounds. You can go straight ahead and go to 22 and a half pounds. Um, I usually leave a little bit and I let this sit for a day because I use the RTV come back and just finish off that little bit um, just so it gives you a better seal. That's how I've been doing it. You do whatever you want. So this is set for 21 and a half, 22 and a half, 22. It's 270 inches, which is 22 and a half. Um, I see most people do it to 22. Okay. So, okay. I see how I'm talking about not using too much RTV. It's barely coming out and that's what Jesus Christ, I can't say it. I just said that. Um, there's not anything. Just don't use too much RTV. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below because I didn't discuss all the benefits of the high flow um, water pump. And I do answer all my comments. And if you want more technical specs on it, just call um, Flow Cooler. The lady that answered phone, like I said, is great. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like. If you um, want, subscribe. I do appreciate it. And a whole bunch of videos on American-made parts. And I'm almost done putting this motor back together. And then we get to do something else. Have a great day. Talk to you later.